Arunang karuna tarangitakshi Drita pasang kusha pushpa bana chapam Anima di biravritam mayukhai Raham mityeva vibhavaye bhava Sampatkari samarudha sindhura braja sevita Ashvarudha dhishtitashva koti koti bhiravrita Namaste and welcome to another episode of the Sri Lalita Sahasranam. So we're only doing like two or three namas per episode because the meaning is so deep. How can we explore it in just 15 minutes? <laughs> I'm out. I'm leaving a lot out. There's more in the downloads. Uh, look down in the video description and you'll see some links to download the documentation. And that has the complete explanation. We're just hitting the high points here. Uh, so, Nama 66. Sampatkari samarudha sindhura vraja sevita. She is worshipped by herds of elephants headed by Sampatkari. Sampatkari Devi has already been described back in Nama 9. Uh, we didn't go very deep into it there, but here we will. Uh, that nama is Krodha Karan Kushojvala. Uh, that she's very angry. <laughs> and, and when the goddess gets angry, there's nothing that can stop her rage. Uh, she destroys anything that gets in the way of the smooth operation of the universe according to her plan. So, in this Nama, there's also a mention of Sampatkari. Sampatkari Vidya is very powerful. And this is the Bija Krong. Huh? Krong. You'll see it down in the corner of the screen. Huh? That uh, we use this Bija to make other mantras fructify. That when this bija is meditated on, along with one's atma bija, huh, very important, and this atma bija requires initiation because it's calculated astrologically and intuitively by someone who is uh, well along the, the path of the Kala Yoga. So, very important, if you want to chant these mantras that you apply to us and uh, we'll put you in touch with someone who can give you that initiation. So this three syllable or three letter, bija, krom, is very confidential and it's formed of the letters ka, ra, ma, and bindu. Okay, Krom. Ka stands for joy and fame. And Ra, of course, gives mystical powers. It's the Agni Bija, uh, the Bija of fire. And any mantra with, uh, with Ra uh, gives mystic powers, whereas Ma stands for the comforts of home. Uh, and that not only in the present birth, but in future births as well. So the repeated chanting of Krom will give all around prosperity, happiness, uh, spiritual advancement, and fructification of other mantras, such as the Pancha and uh, Sodashi mantra. So you should get initiated into these mantras. 
Uh, these are the powerful mantras of the Kaula path, the Sri Vidya that leads to her abode. That's where we want to go. So the knowledge, the knower, and the known is the primary triad or triple. This ontological triple of three parts is necessary to have a real existence, as the Buddha would term it, a dhamma. Uh, so what is so special about that? Well, almost every language in the world, certainly every developed language, like Sanskrit, English, German, even Japanese, Chinese, and so on. Every sentence has a subject, an object, and a predicate. So these are the same thing as the knower, the known, and the knowing, respectively. Okay, this is the primary or fundamental triad at the root of existence. So this knowledge of realizing that all of these three are actually one thing is called Sukha Sampatkara. Sukha Sampatkara. The, the joy of realizing the oneness of the three. Shiva Sutra 119 says, Shakti Sandhane Sariropatihi. Single pointed union with Shakti, with intensity and constant awareness. Shakti Sandhana, huh? that everything I think of as myself is actually Shakti. This is the fundamental <laughs> realization of the Sri Vidya. Huh? that beginning with consciousness, everything is her. Consciousness, mind, ego, personality, the senses, the objects of the senses, huh? the world itself, life, life energy, kundalini, prana. Huh? These are all her and they are hers. So they operate according to her direction, not ours. So this is why we can get sick. Uh, we, we also, we have to die because of this karma of trying to usurp her property and use it for ourselves, for our own enjoyment, for our own purposes, instead of her purposes. This is why the whole human race is suffering especially right now. Look at the uh, environmental crisis. Look at this coronavirus crisis. Huh? This is all due to karma. See, this is her herd of elephants stomping through, destroying everything in their path. You know, that's how an elephant fights. Huh? He rears up and then stomps on you. Squish. <laughs> and she has an unlimited herd of such elephants in her army. Remember, these are the section of Namas dealing with the killing of Bandasura. So she deployed all of her uh, tremendous military strength against Bandasura because he was very, very powerful. Really, only she could kill him. So this herd of elephants <laughs> is one of the military strengths that she has. So if one is able to, you know, see one's identification with Shakti, then there's no need to wish for any benedictions. Benedictions will come automatically. Uh, she knows what we need. She is us. So everything will come to facilitate our path to self-realization. Once we dedicate ourselves to her and realize that we are hers. So this is very, a very important principle in all kinds of yoga that one should energize one's thoughts. 
huh? That thoughts aren't just merely dreams floating around in the mind. Thoughts should be very purposeful, very targeted, concentrated, full of energy. Then the thoughts will have their effect. Huh? If they're just idle dreaming, you can't expect any result. So a lot of people approach spirituality like this as a hobby. Oh yeah, I'd like to be enlightened someday. Yeah, maybe I'll, I'll sit for a few minutes and meditate. No, no, no. The whole life should be a meditation. The whole life should be surrendered to Shakti. Then the results will come automatically. So if you meditate on Lalita with the Bija Chrome and the Atma Bija, whatever your Atma Bija may be, your Siddhi Mantra, huh? then very easily you will get everything you need to advance on the path. That doesn't mean you get everything you want, but you get everything you need. Huh? So the next Nama, 67. Ashva Rudha Dishtitashva Koti Koti Biravrita Lalita is surrounded by many horses, headed by Ashvarudha Devi, whom we discussed in Nama 8. Huh? She's one of the weapons. Nama 8 is Ragaswarupa Pashadya. Ashvarudha Devi is the chief of the war horses of Devi. Huh? She has a herd of unlimited horses that she uses in battles against the demons. And you know how horses are. Horses like to run. They like to cut loose huh? across a nice flat plain and just go for it. So the senses are like that. If the senses are not controlled, they will run away. And uh, there's a nice picture here, I'll, I'll put it up for you, of the conditioned soul riding in a chariot, trying to control these horses of the senses. But we can't control these horses because they're not our horses. They don't owe their loyalty to us. Horses are very loyal once they become your friend. But they owe their loyalty to Shakti because she is the senses. She is the 36 tattvas. Huh? So the senses, the sense objects, the elements, everything is her. Try to understand. Then out of these uh, horses, Ashvaruda has a mantra consisting of 13 bijas. And uh, this mantra is very secret, so we're not going to give it here. But uh, these mantras that have uh, four or, or five syllables in the beginning and then are recited in reverse order at the end, uh, this is called mantra samputa. Samputa means caged, huh? kept in. So the idea is that the energy and the benefit that is generated by chanting the mantra is kept in within the sadhaka, not allowed to go out. So the, these mantras, similar to the uh, Shodashi mantra, they result, they fructify very quickly because none of the energy is dissipated. Shiva Sutra 112 says, Vismayo Yoga Bhumika. The meaning is a little bit complicated. The different chakras are all particular vortexes of energy dedicated to a certain function. You have the sex chakra, the energy chakra, the movement chakra, the emotion chakra, the communication chakra, the mental chakra, and finally the ecstasy or consciousness chakra. Seven chakras. So these vortexes of energy are not physical. 
That's why, uh, you know, scientists say, well, we have never observed these chakras in the human body because they only observe the gross body. Because stupid scientists <laughs> reject subjective knowledge, they cannot see or perceive these vortexes of energy. But anybody who meditates on the chakras just a little bit or uh, uses the chakra syllables, uh, yang, rang, lang, and so on, uh, that he will very quickly realize these chakras. And so these chakras all have to operate at their highest energy level in order to support full self-realization. That's when one goes above even the sahasrara and attains turiya. Turiya really can't be explained. <laughs> it means the fourth. It means that one is above the three lower or ordinary stages of consciousness waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. And that one observes these three states of consciousness simultaneously. So this is a very exalted state, but this is achievable very easily through the practice of mantra, Sri Vidya mantras. So in this state, uh, the yogi is called Uma. Uma also means the wife of Shiva, or actually the lover, beloved of Shiva. So in this state, which is compared to conjugal love, the energy of the chakras is, reaches its maximum intensity. And then this, this is all directed towards worship of Shiva, Brahman, uh, Sadashiva or Parashiva. And this is orgasmic. It's all pervading. It's ecstatic and, and it's beyond description, but you, you really should experience it. <laughs> do yourself a favor and do the yogic process that results in this experience. So Lalita, the goddess, manifests in the form of the world. The forms of the world, although they appear to be many, are actually one, and that is her. So when one penetrates to this realization, then this, he's on the doorstep of full self-realization of Shivoham, Aham Pramasmi. I am that. Aung Tatsat. Aung Shakti Aung.